In this video, I wanna share with you 10 tips which I think are really important to know if you're a beginner music producer. What's up my producer friends, I'm David with anothermonsterproductions.com. If you're new to the channel, I do do a lot of FL Studio and production related tutorials, and I really try and focus on going into depth in these tutorials and giving you the information that I think is important that you need to learn. So check out some of the other tutorials on the channel if you're interested. In this video, I wanna share with you 10 tips that I think are really important to learn slash implement into your productions as soon as possible. There are definitely a lot more tips out there, so if you have your own tips that you think are really important that you you want to share with everyone, go ahead and leave that in the comments down below. And I'm sure there will be a lot of producers in the community who can really benefit from that. Anyway, with all that being said, let's get straight into the tips. All right, so tip number one is to go ahead and get in the habit of saving constantly. What I like to do is anytime I make any sort of change inside the session that I'm working on, I go ahead and hit control S which is gonna automatically save it. And if you do this enough times, you'll get into the habit of just automatically doing it. There's nothing worse than working on a track for hours and then having it crash and then realize that you haven't saved for a really long time. Now I use FL Studio and inside FL Studio, we can actually go into our file settings and then we have an auto save option. So we can actually go in here and set it to every five minutes and before risky operations or just every five minutes or every 10 minutes or every 15 minutes or never. So I'd recommend going in here and making sure that you set it to at least, you know, every 15 minutes or something like that. And then we even have the option to set the amount of auto saves. So I've got mine set to 200. So once it does more than 200 auto saves, it's going to start erasing the auto saves that you've done before that. And then these auto saves will be in a specific folder, which you can go back later and find those if you need to. So if you use FL Studio, I definitely recommend doing that. If you use a different DAW, I'm sure that your DAW has the same feature built into it. You'll just have to figure out how to do that. All right, so tip number two is I would recommend you go ahead and start building a royalty-free sample library for yourself. And what I mean by this is, you know, royalty-free drum samples, royalty-free melody samples, whatever you can get your hands on to help with creativity. Pretty much the more samples you have access to, the better. Luckily these days, there are a lot of really good options out there both paid and free. I do have a list of a, a huge resource of free plugins, uh, samples, synths, effects, all sorts of great plugins that you can get for free. So I'll be sure to leave that in a link in the description of this video if you guys wanna check that out. But like I said, there is a sample section there and I would highly recommend that you start building a really good sample section because one of the most important things when it comes to music production is sample selection and making sure that you're choosing high quality samples to begin with. It's gonna make your life a lot easier. All right, so tip number three is to create your own custom templates. And the reason why I suggest that people do this is so that you can go ahead and color code stuff, add whatever plugins you want, add whatever drum kits you want into your custom template. And then every time you load up FL Studio or whatever DAW you're using, you automatically have that stuff loaded up. You don't have to spend extra time loading up the same plugins every time you load up a new session. So I do have an old video on my channel where I show you how to make a custom template in FL Studio. If you use FL Studio, you can go ahead and check that video out. I'll be sure to leave a link on the screen now and also in the description of this video. Tip number four learn keyboard shortcuts. This is something that I'm still sort of in the process of doing. I've been producing for a very long time, over 15 years at this point, and this is something that I neglected to do, and so I highly recommend doing this if you're new to production. Anything that you can do to incorporate into your workflow that's gonna ultimately save you time is huge, and keyboard shortcuts are gonna save you a ton of time. Now, I'm not gonna get into all the keyboard shortcuts that you should know in this video. Maybe I'll do a video in the future where I talk about that for FL Studio. Let me know if that's something that you're interested in. In the meantime, if you're an FL Studio user and you want a list to all of the keyboard shortcuts out there, if you hit F1 on your keyboard, anytime you have FL Studio loaded up, it's going to load up the manual. And then within the manual, you can search for keyboard shortcuts and it's going to bring up a complete list of all the FL Studio keyboard shortcuts. I'm sure it's the same for other DAWs out there as well. Tip number five is don't get bogged down or stuck working on the same project. I think in the beginning, it's really important to just try and get through as many projects as you can because every time you start a new project, you're gonna be a little bit faster, you're gonna be a little bit better in your workflow, and ultimately you're gonna come up with a better result. I don't think you should expect to create masterpieces in the first few months of production. Obviously, everyone learns differently and everyone progresses at a different pace, but I would say that within the first two to six months of production, you're probably 
probably not going to want to keep any of those tracks or release them. And so in this space of time where you're learning production, you're learning the software, I would recommend just trying to get through those projects as quickly as possible. If you get hung up on something, just go ahead and start on a new project. And eventually you're going to get to a place where you do want to finish your projects. And at that point, you are going to want to take more time and actually spend the time necessary to finish that project and make sure that it's as good as it can be. Tip number six, get studio monitor headphones or studio monitors as quickly as possible. Studio monitors and studio monitor headphones are designed to have a flat frequency response. And this allows them to translate better across the board into all sorts of other speaker systems. Every other speaker system that we listen to, so the car, your earbuds, whatever the case may be, they're all gonna have their own sort of unique EQ curve and music is gonna sound different in those speakers. So it's very important to get a pair of monitors that have a flat frequency response, which are gonna translate better to all different types of speakers. Now this point does have a little caveat because depending on your room and depending on how you have your speakers set up, you're still not gonna be able to hear everything perfectly accurately and flat because we're gonna have early reflection points all over the room. Uh, things are gonna be bouncing back and you're gonna be hearing different frequencies differently than you should until you properly acoustically treat your room and set up your speakers in a place that actually mathematically makes sense so that they're even distance apart. I don't wanna go into too much detail in this video about all that stuff, uh, but I have done videos in the past on the channel that you can check out. Again, I'll try and link that in the description below if you're interested in that. So that leads me to tip number seven, which is to learn how to mix properly. It's a very important skill as a music producer. You need to learn how to mix. In order to learn how to mix your music, you're really gonna want a good pair of studio monitor headphones or good studio monitors, as I mentioned in the previous tip. I have actually a lot of videos on the channel which are dedicated to mixing. So again, I don't wanna go into too much depth. I will mention that one tool that I love using is a spectrum analyzer tool. It gives you a visual feedback of what's actually happening in the musical range, in the musical spectrum and it's called Span by Voxingo. It's a free plugin. I'll be sure to leave a link in the description of this video if you guys want to get that plugin. But it's going to give you some great visual feedback, which is also going to help you make better mixing decisions while you listen at the same time. Tip number eight. Collaborate with other producers. The quicker you can do this, the better, and especially if you can find other producers who are farther advanced with you and actually get together with them in person and learn specific tricks and techniques that they do to help their tracks sound better. If you don't have access to other producers that you can collaborate with, the next best thing is just getting on YouTube and finding other producers who are better than you, who can walk you through some of their tracks, show you how they did it. Again, I do a lot of videos like this on the channel. That's one of the resources I'm trying to bring to you guys. So be sure to check some of that stuff Stuff out if you're interested. Tip number nine, come up with a better labeling system when you save your tracks. So I used to save my tracks all sorts of weird names and especially when you start getting into producing for other people and then you have to go back and you have to try and find the session file for a track if they want you to tweak something and then you have no idea what you named it. It's like six months to a year later, sometimes even longer, and you're going through thousands of different session files and you can't find it. You're gonna waste so much time by not just labeling your tracks a certain way. So what I like to do is label it by the genre and then the date and then if the track does have a name later, I'll change it to the name of the track with that date. And I always include the date, so this way at the very least I can go back and find that track quicker, knowing roughly when it was created. And then if you really wanna get organized, you can take this a step farther by really creating different folders for yourself and saving specific projects within specific folders, et cetera, et cetera. All right, so my last tip is to use reference tracks. This is something that I talk about a lot on the channel. And a big reason is because I, I get this question all the time from up and coming producers where it's, you know, they, they hit a point where they just, they can't figure out how to do the arrangement or they can't figure out how to mix a certain way or whatever the case may be, they're struggling in a certain way. And this is where reference tracks can really help you out. So if you're struggling, let's say for example, with how to arrange the track and you just can't figure out which element goes where where and what comes next, that's where reference tracks can come in and you can actually bring a reference track, which is preferably going to be the same genre as whatever you're producing. You can load it up into your DAW and you can essentially just copy the structure of that reference track and that will answer all your arrangement or structure questions. You can do this for the mix down, you can do this for so many different questions that might arise while you're producing.
Thanks for watching the video guys. If you liked it, be sure to hit the like button. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Don't forget to hit the bell notification. That's going to let you know anytime I release videos in the future. Right now I'm doing tutorials about once a week and those usually come out on Friday or Saturday. So keep an eye out for that. If you have any questions about anything or tutorial requests, feel free to hit me up on Instagram at anothermonster1. Also, if you feel like you're really struggling with music production, sound design, anything in between, and you feel like you just need a little bit of extra help, I am doing one-on-one -on -one private lessons, which you can sign up for on my website at anothermonsterproductions.com. I'll be sure to leave a link in the description of this video if you guys want to sign up for that. And while you're there, be sure to take advantage of the free stuff I'm giving away in the description of this video as well. I've got a sample pack and an ebook, which you can download for free. You just need to enter your email address and I'll send that stuff over to you. And as always, I will see you in the next video.